So <clears throat> this is a checkpoint module five solutions, the video um, solutions. Uh, for section 3.5, um, we were given a rational function. We immediately observe that the degree of the top and the degree of the denominator are the same. Every time that happens, same degree over same degree, 1, 1, or 2, 2, or 3, 3, doesn't matter. Uh, we also always know that uh, the y, um, the behavior, the end behavior, as, as well as the horizontal asymptote, will be the leading coefficient over the leading coefficient. So 3 divided by 1, but there is a minus in front, a negative sign. So y equals negative 3 is the horizontal asymptote, which automatically is the end behavior. We notice that the denominator cannot be 0, so we know that x cannot be negative 2. That will make the denominator 0. And we know that a fraction is 0 when the top is 0. So f of x is 0 only when 3x is 0, which means automatically x is 0. These are the only numbers I need in the x in the table for, for the x values. Negative 2 means this does not exist, and 0 is 0. And the end behavior. Now I need to determine the signs of infinities because I know that x equals negative 2 is a vertical asymptote but I need to find the signs left and right and the way I do it is by simply plugging in negative 2.1 as I mentioned here so I get negative over negative but there is a minus in front so therefore this is negative infinity and when I plug in negative 1.9 which is the a number very very close to negative 2 from this side I get positive infinity because Positive with, with negative, and with negative in front is positive infinity. So therefore, x equals negative 2 is a vertical asymptote. I have to check whether the function is symmetric. The function is not symmetric because f of negative x will be this, and negative f of x will be this. So f of negative x will not equal either one. So the function is not symmetric. When I graph a function with asymptotes, I have to graph the asymptotes first negative 2 x equals negative 2 and y equals negative 3. Then I plot this point. I see on the right hand side it's coming from positive infinity towards negative 3, from positive infinity towards negative 3, and on this side from negative 3 to negative infinity. And this is the graph. In the same way, um, I graph the um, problem 72. Uh, what do I mean by the same way? I factor the denominator to know exactly that x equals negative 2 and x equals 3 are vertical asymptotes. And when this function is 0, um, x minus 4 has to be 0. So x equals 4. So I have 4 in the table, 3, negative 2, 0 has to be in the table at all times. When I plug in 0, I get negative 4 over negative 6, which is 2 thirds. Now I need the signs left and right of the asymptotes, exactly how I did before. I plugged in negative 2.1, negative 1.9, I plugged in 2.9 and 3.1, and I got these symbols. And you can follow them here. The function, is it, again, is not symmetric because I checked. These are not equal. f of negative x does not equal f of x, and it does not equal negative f of x. So and now I, when I graph this function, clearly 0 to negative infinity is an easy situation. In the middle, I don't know if the function turns on two-thirds, unlikely, or not. So this piece I will have to graph with a graphing calculator because I have to determine the minimum anyway. So we'll graph it with a graphing calculator and then we'll identify the minimum. This side is a little bit more complicated. So it's coming from negative infinity. It crosses at four, obvious, obviously, but somehow it has to continue and come back to, to approach asymptotically y equals 0, the horizontal asymptote. Again, how do I know? Because the degree of the numerator is 1, the degree of the denominator is 2. Every time the degree of the denominator is bigger, not equal to, strictly bigger than the degree of the top, the horizontal asymptote is always 0 and the end behavior. So when it crosses at 4, it cannot become flat and go to zero. It has to reach a maximum and then come back. And we will determine the maximum with the graphing calculator. Okay, so we put the function in the graphing calculator. Let me show this one more time. I showed it in the previous video. So 
be very careful how you plug in the function in parentheses for the top x minus 4 I hope you can see this divided by in parentheses x squared minus x and minus 6 and close the parentheses now you do not have to add the horizontal asymptote but because it's 0 and it would be the y the x-axis but if I have we have, have a horizontal asymptote at 2 or negative 1 or negative 3 you have to enter it as another function let me enter it so you just remember there is no need in this case because it will be the x-axis. So now I will use the standard, so zoom standard 6. This is very deceiving and we know that this cannot happen. There is no discussion on this side, that's very clear. I do not know how low it goes but obviously that is not a turning point. Two-thirds, zero two-thirds is not the turning point. So I will determine the minimum here between negative 2 and 3. But you cannot enter negative 2 because you'll get an error. You cannot get enter 3 because you'll get an error. So I will enter negative 1 to positive 2.5, let's say. So second and calc. So at negative 1, oops, second and calc, I want to choose a minimum, 3. And Yes, you can also trace it like that with, with an arrow. That's the left point. That's fine. It, the calculator, if, I re, if you remember, I said this in a previous video, the calculator needs limits here, where to look for the minimum. So just make sure that you pass the minimum. It's obviously I pass the minimum. So the calculator will look for a minimum value between these two marks and press Enter. I don't want to guess. And here it is, 1.55, 0 0.48. So obviously this is where the minimum is. But now let's focus on this area because that's very important. Because the way it's uh, calculator is deceiving, so be very careful. So this area is very important. So um, I will just focus between 4 and 10. So I'll change the viewing window between 4 for x and 10 for x with a scale of 1, that's fine. Y minimum, I meant negative 1. How big? I already have calculated it here, so I'm just going to say 1. But let's say you, you don't know. I'm going to put 2 with a scale of 1. And then when I graph, look what happens. Obviously, they cannot overlap. It will reach a maximum. Okay, so then go back to second calc and calculate, uh, select maximum. Make sure that you are on the left hand side of the maximum and I'm just I'm just going to choose here 9 and see where the maximum is and here it is it's at 6.45 and the maximum value is 0 0.08 okay moving on uh, the next problem everything the same but this time the degree is Exactly, it's higher by the degree of the denominator, numerator, higher than the denominator, exactly by one unit. That is the case, not a horizontal asymptote, a slant asymptote. Use the long division or synthetic division, and you will determine that the um, uh, quotient is x, which is the slant asymptote. The remainder is 1 over x minus 1. At infinities, this piece is 0. That's why the function follows y equals x. y equals x is, a, is a, um, a straight line, a linear function, with a positive slope. So it comes from negative infinity going to positive infinity, and this is the end behavior of the function. Again, to determine for x equals 1, vertical asymptote to determine the signs left and right, I used 0.9 and 1.1. I plugged it in, and I got these negative infinity to infinity. So here we have to uh, graph the, the asymptotes first, y equals x, the slant asymptote, and x equals 1, the vertical asymptote. And we know that the function cannot connect. Of course, uh, uh, when x is 0, we have to find 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So the function cannot go from negative infinity to infinity. To negative infinity to negative infinity it has to go to a maximum. It turns out that this happens to be the turning point at the maximum on the y-axis. Of course, here we know 
It's not possible for a function to connect infinities. It has to come to a minimum and go asymptotically follow the asymptote, asymptotically follow the asymptote, asymptotically follow the asymptote, the same here. So this, we can determine it with the graphing calculator as I showed before. Just enter a left bound and a right bound and then select um, give me the max, the minimum and you get this. You should always put them back in the table. Um, here we were given a graph and a function to evaluate from, uh, from the graph we did. So it was in both cases 1.5 milligrams per liter and the horizontal asymptote because the degree is lower at the top than the denominator that will all, regardless of by how much. As long as this is higher than that, the horizontal asymptote is always zero. Um, here the last section is asking us to um, solve uh, quadratic polynomial and uh, rational inequalities. Um, when I see a negative leading coefficient, I will refuse to work with it. Multiply both sides by negative one. Don't forget to switch the symbol, factor. And now I'm going to study the signs of these two factors, x and x minus 2. The top row is values of x, from negative infinity to infinity. And now these two are, are straight lines with a positive slope. They come from negative and go positive. Negative, positive, negative, positive. Of course, they are 0 at 0, and this one is 0 at 2. For the first subinterval, when I multiply two positives, I get a positive. In the middle, I multiply a positive by a negative, and outside, positive times positive. What do I want? I want less than or equal to zero. That's why I have to choose where this product is less than or equal to zero, which means between zero and two. Same thing here. X is the value, um, this X is the variable in the problem. X has the same sign. Negative x plus 4, careful. It's 0 at 4. You have to put the zeros first. And then this is a linear function with a negative slope. Positive and negative. Positive, 0, negative. This one, the last factor, is this. Negative, 0, positive. On the first subinterval, I multiply two negatives. On the next subinterval, I have one negative. On the next subinterval, I have two negatives. And on the last one, I have one negative. What do I want? I want negative between 0 and 4 and 6 and infinity. The next one, same thing, factor completely. But x squared is always positive except when it's 0. x minus 4, again, a linear function with a positive slope, so negative 0, positive. Negative, positive. I'm sorry, negative, negative, positive. So what do I want? I want negative. So I will choose this. Less than or equal to zero, so I have to include that. There is nothing else. Uh, two rationals. Again, the same thing. I refuse to deal with something like this because I can multiply both sides by negative one. I factor out negative one, so this changes into x plus three. Not from one. I have to factor out from the both. And I get x plus three over x plus two. I have to switch the symbol. I do the same thing, same signs, because they have their positive, they have positive slope, negative, positive, negative, positive, divide two negatives, divide a negative, two, neg two positives, greater than zero, negative infinity to negative three, negative two to infinity. You cannot include negative two because the function is undefined. This one is slightly more difficult only because you have to realize that the table does not help if you don't have zero on the other side and the product on the left or a ratio. So I subtract two, find the least common denominator. Then this is negative two x plus four, negative x plus four. Again, the same thing, factor out negative one, x minus four at the top, x minus two, switch to symbol, use the table again, x minus four, x minus two, both have the same sequence of signs because they have positive slope. Two negatives, a negative, no negative. Great, less than zero, between two and four. I hope this helps.